What's going on everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's TV review of the penultimate episode of Suspicion, which is season one, episode seven, Questions of Trust. This episode is directed by Chris Long. Now, as always, if you like this episode, awesome. Hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button as well as commenting below on any video you watch, including this one. Okay, so penultimate episodes are very, very important. They always have been. They're important for the simple fact that they have to reveal something. I mean, not necessarily have to reveal, but in shows like this, they have to reveal something for the show to kind of come to its conclusion in the final episode of the season or series or whatever they're doing. And not only did this episode do that, but it did it in a pretty um, crazy fashion, to be fairly honest. This is a banger of an episode, as my friends would say. This is an episode that really works in the simple fact that it gives us what we need. It does it with panache and fun and entertainment, but it reveals the kind of nature of what exactly is going on, why was Leo kidnapped, and who is involved and what is involved. This is where we get the revelation of the suspect and who was involved with the kidnapping. This is where we get the kind of revelation of why Catherine Newton's uh, son was taken. And this is the best episode of the series so far. You know, I mean, there's only seven, eight episodes, but this is the a great penultimate episode, to be fairly honest. And it basically starts out, uh, Eric Creswell is running down the street. He's being chased after a car, which I'm assuming Copeland hired to find Creswell and kill him. And Creswell makes it to the police, which will come into effect later on in the last episode. But this episode has two kind of convol uh, converging arcs going on and the one arc that is most important is of course Catherine Newton's arc I mean the the, the suspects are fine and this Catherine Newton arc in this what is re revealed in this situation is the situational reason for this series even existing you know yes it's about suspects that are being accused of kidnapping a person but really it's about why is Catherine Newton involved and why is her son being kidnapped and at first, it's, you know, it comes down to Eric Copeland and Sean talked in the last episode and, you know, the idea of their characters being in cahoots. But we find out it's much more, uh, much more difficult than that. There's much, there's a lot of moving parts to the situation. But in essence, Catherine Noon, against Copeland's wishes, Martin Copeland's wishes, uh, has decided to set up an interview with Nancy Harper, who is like the Barbara Walters of this universe. She's very forward in her questions. She's very difficult as an interview interviewer not in the sense that she's like difficult to talk to but she's difficult and she asks the hard questions that a lot of people won't ask she's very much against softball questions and on top of everything we find out that Catherine Newton thanks to an FBI agent who was of course watching over the building has come to realization that Martin Copeland is involved more than he should be and it's one of those stories where you kind of know it was coming you know Martin Copeland's a very shady individual he's trying to quote unquote protect Catherine Newton but is that really what's happening you know it's that type of thing the FBI agent asked Catherine Newton do you know much about Copeland's dealings like do you know that he may possibly have have dealt with the suspects which of course Catherine Noon's you know she's supposedly a, a smart woman uh, she would know that he's you know there's something shady about him but there's the whole thing about you know she starts questioning the whole idea of does Copeland actually is he involved with Leo's disappearance is he involved with the suspects that type of thing and it comes to a head later on in the episode it's really interesting to see because it's the idea of the you really don't know the people that you know the people that you know until it comes to a head you really kind of have a blind eye to everything you kind of turn your back to everything and that's what the interview in its nutshell is trying to say because this as as Catherine Newton says it's not even about climate change it's not really about that it's about turning your back on something serious and you know something that could affect the you know country and the whole world World, and that's what maybe, that's what the idea of this of this company that Catherine Newton and Martin Copeland own is what a lot of companies do. So it's kind of a snapshot of how messed up the whole idea of the economy and corporations and how they turn their backs until it becomes a major major problem. 
And I think that's, you know, where we stand in a lot of things today. You know, there are corporations that are doing such shady stuff that when something happens like the Exxon Valdez oil spill or just, a, you know, the climate change problem or just anything in general, until it becomes a major problem, they just turn their back on it. They, you know, try to hide it. It's just, it's really scummy. It's really disgusting. But, you know, Catherine Newton and Martin Copeland have done that. They have turned their back on it. And I think... You know, Catherine Noon's really visibly upset. Their her child has disappeared, as most mothers and fathers and you know family members would be. But this stuff is going to come to a light. You can't hide it forever, and that's what Nancy Harper's character does in this episode. Is she reveals that the Eric Cresswell character did a study that he was hired by Copeland New uh, Newman's uh, organization or company, and he came up with some predictions, which I, I don't know how much it follows like real true to life, but he follows pre he found predictions of climate change, of situations and stuff like that. Catherine Newman and Martin Copeland's company knew about this. They had their own company called IOP, which was a company that, you know, was being disguised as a, a research company or whatever. And uh, Eric Cresswell was kind of shooting in the background, kind of disgraced a little bit until the, he became an important character, you know, as the story progressed in the series. But that's what happens all the time. You look at something like uh, The Insider, uh, the Russell Crowe uh, Al Pacino movie, it's the same thing, you know, until... It becomes a major thing. They want to sweep all the information under the rug, tell their own, you know, faithful story as they claim, which is always false. And I think that's what this ultimately comes down to is it's not even about really these suspects and what they're 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 being suspected for doing. It's the idea of be careful how you do what you do because it will come back to bite you in the ass. And that's exactly what happens to Catherine Newton here. And, you know, it becomes really something that she gets really angry about. But then she gets really angry at Martin Copeland because Martin Copeland's hiding stuff. And they kind of swept this, on, this whole climate thing under the rug. And now it's coming back to they may lose everything because of the simple lie that they told. And that's what the tell the truth means is telling that simple lie that kind of boils out to something bigger so that's really fascinating but it also it leads martin copeland to another situation which i'll talk about at the end but i wanted to bring that up first just on the simple fact of how important and how much one little lie or one little situation can explode into something much much bigger so that's pretty much what, what suspicion is coming down to like like i said you can kind of see it coming because it's about a big corporation and a woman who her son gets uh a kidnapped and they want to tell the truth and who's this eric cresswell character it's about a lie that was spread that became bigger than what it was and then unfortunately these you know three or four and three or four individuals depending on how you look at it because eddie's not really a suspect how it looks at it, you know these individuals lives were ruined because of that situation but as we find out that may not totally be the truth but real quick with the vanessa and scott stuff they're monitoring the suspects they're basically in the same office for the whole entire episode keeping track you know of course the phone that eddie has gets destroyed they just basically are there as like um, us, the, the, the viewers, I guess you could say, keep an eye on these suspects and, you know, things are going to go wrong. But at the end of the episode, they have Eric Cresswell, you know, show up their office. So uh, the last episode is going to deal with that whole situation. But I just wanted to kind of throw that in there, you know, Vanessa and Scott's character is just more background in this episode than anything, but it's, it's still fun to watch. You know, they're kind of taking the FBI, FBI into New York and stuff like that, and you're know, dealing with that situation with the suspects. And overall, it's not really, you know, much to add, but there is something there to, you know, that they have to deal with. And I like their characters. They're fun, but they're more just the individuals that either help the suspects or don't help the suspects, all that type of thing. So, and so this leads to the suspects, the five individuals. They, of course, we know Eddie is the cop undercover we know sean's been working with copeland for whatever reason we like i i suspected that copeland may have done something with leo's disappearance but it may not be that kind of truth but basically what happens is the suspects are now in new york they are just waking up from their day of course uh tara is very suspect uh suspectful or very suspect of uh sean's character she's walking down washington square with eddie they start questioning what sean's motive and stuff like that is and they don't really trust him and of course we know eddie's not really telling the truth and on top of everything you know they see like a, a newspaper ad or newspaper guy handing out newspapers that has their their photos on it but the thing about everything that's happening is Eddie's like, I need to 
you know, we need to split up, which is always the worst thing you want to do in a show. And if any kind of either horror or, you know, suspense or whatever, you don't want to, you don't want to split up because it means trouble. But Eddie decides he's going to walk to a local coffee shop, which weirdly enough, Adesh just happens to be walking by. It's very convenient. It's very just having you have, I guess you have to have that point where the character just walks up to the moment where the, the revelation of what Eddie is just happens to be there. And of course, Adesh walks into the bathroom where Eddie is talking to Vanessa and he realizes what's going on. Everything is happening. Eddie sees Adesh. Eddie runs after Adesh. Adesh, of course, questions, what are you? Are you working with the police? Eddie tries to say he's working with Catherine Newton, which if you think about it, the police are working with Catherine Newton. Eddie is working with Catherine Newton. So it makes a little bit of sense, but whether it's... It's kind of a lie, basically, but Eddie, you know, Adesh doesn't really believe him asking to pull out the phone, and if he called, what would be the last number? And um, this is when Natalie walks by, and so Adesh knows that Eddie is undercover for whatever reason, whether it be the truth or not. Now we have kind of open the doors to who Eddie is. And of course, like I said, Natalie walks by conveniently. So they go after Natalie and it leads Sean to pick him up in the, the Washington square and he you know, hugs him to check for trackers and stuff like that. And in the process of everything, Vanessa and Scott are watching them and they end up at a warehouse on a dock of some sort. Because of the whole Nancy Harper thing, uh, Copeland can't leave now, but he was supposed to meet them at the at the warehouse at the on the dock. And uh, of course, uh, Sean is trying to get a dash to get into his computer, uh, to his account, to Copeland's account or whatever, security account, whatever you want to call it. And this is when Tara and everybody realizes that Sean is more than he says he is. He, he knows and works with Copeland. And we come to find out it's all about money. He was supposed to bring these guys to Copeland so they can question him. Uh, unfortunately, that's not happening because Copeland has to stay behind. But basically, the FBI are approaching through the river. And Sean closes the door and puts everybody in the van. And that's when we reveal that Copeland has sent two guys to basically uh, execute all the suspects. Yeah, so he's killing all the suspects, but the real the real point of the situation is Sean kills both the both the Copeland's people. Copeland that, you know, Tilson everybody's dead and that's when Sean reveals that he was being paid to bring him over, that Copeland was going to question him. And if they gave the information he needed, he would probably let him go, but if he gave him the information he didn't like, you know, they'd be killed and you know, I think he would have killed him either way. It wouldn't have worked out either way for these suspects, but in the process of everything, they are going to find themselves going back to the the Madison Hotel where currently Catherine Newton and Copeland are where the, of course, uh, kidnapping happened. And everything becomes a little too heightened, a little too unrealistic about how they are able to get into the hotel unseen. I mean, I know they're under different guises and costumes and stuff like that, but if you're smart enough and you've been watching the news and reading the paper, it's very difficult to believe that these this many people would not notice a dash would not notice tara they're like the world's most well-known suspects at this point but they just see them somehow are able to integrate themselves into the hotel very easily but not before they play a trick on the fbi because sean's very smart he pays a, an individual to drive the van to the fbi building to distract the fbi from going, from arresting them because he knows they're after him they Adesh makes himself into the building through a, a side door and you know tara and uh sean of course make it to the front desk so they can get a key to a room that they actually don't have uh of course uh eddie and uh, natalie make themselves way up the elevator and they make themselves to room 1409 and they watch the interview and stuff like that and Adesh is able to make his way into the security system to the cameras and after the whole incident of Catherine Newton, newman basically confronting copeland about the whole situation about how they're almost kind of ruined and what did he know what did he do with the suspects of course he's lying but he's like you don't believe me so he basically walks out Catherine newman watches the tv just realizing everything that's kind of gone wrong with the situation and in the process of everything cope was walking down the hallway where from 1409 is and adesh cuts the camera feed and they actually pull they actually take uh, copeland into the room 
and throw him into a chair and start questioning him about everything. Now, this is where the revelation happens. And if you look at it very closely, you can kind of see who the who the suspect that kidnapped Leo Newman probably was. But Copeland's like, it was one of you guys that kidnapped him. And Sean's trying to get the money. And all of a sudden, Copeland is shot. He's shot. We see the gun. We see the blood in the back of the chair and the hole and stuff like that. And... Uh, it's made to believe that Sean did it, but if you watch very closely, a few probably like thirty seconds prior, they do a close-up shot on Natalie, and you see her face just kind of when what Copeland's talking about with the suspects and stuff like that. If you watch her face, you can you realize that there's something happening there. It's been going on through the entire series, but it's not as noticeable as it is now. So the gunshot is not by Sean, but is by Natalie. So that could lead to two several options. Either Natalie, one, how did Natalie get the gun? For one, that's you know where did she get the gun at? That's the question. Where did, when did she get it? Where did she get it? I think she got it from her friend or somebody. She the person that she was staying the night with at the in New York City. But she is the one that has killed Copeland, and the look on her face pretty much leads to the, maybe the possible conclusion that she is the one that kidnapped Leo Newman. And in the process, when you go back and listen to her story about why she was in New York, she had, I think, four or five friends, if I remember right. And I was thinking about that. I'm like, that's a pretty good possibility because I think there was like four or five individuals that kidnapped Leo Newman with the, the mask on and stuff like that, the, the royal family. So where so that's why the penultimate episode is so important because of the situation. We get Natalie killing Copeland. We get the big revelation of Catherine Newman or possibly why Leo Newman was kidnapped. And it leads to, you know, usually the finale is a little bit lesser than the penultimate episode. Look at like, you know, Breaking Bad or something like that. But yeah, it leads to some big questions about what is exactly is natalie not telling them and we're going to learn that in the next episode the thing about a show like this and it was the same thing with the after party when you go into a show and you are given small bits and pieces as the series moves along you hope and hope and hope that it's somebody other than the suspects you hope it's like a big revelation like it's Catherine newman which it could still be part of her situation or it was eric creswell eric Co or copeland martin copeland or something like that when it comes down to it being one of the actual suspects it's a it's always a little deflating because it's always one of those situations where you go oh man i wanted it so much more but that's just the nature of these types of shows where but especially when you you know when you watch something like the after party and spoiler alert if you have not seen the show go back and watch it but this is a spoiler discussion but ben schwartz was the was the killer of the david franco character and um it's always a little deflating it's like I think it's the come down from the the constant nature of like the tense nature of the show itself that when the killer is revealed or the suspect is revealed to who it was it's always somebody that you've been watching throughout the entire series and that's a little deflating but it's not like it, I don't take it away from the show it's just like I oh, mean I wanted so much more it's an unrealistic expectation that you really want out of the show and that's not what's you know that's not what the show is about but in the end it's um you find out you know most likely Natalie is one that was one of the kidnappers and the other two are just unfortunate circumstance and yeah it's uh it's an episode that gives us exactly what we wanted it really is i'm really happy that this episode delivered and uh really made me happy that this show is um coming to a conclusion that will actually pretty be pretty worthwhile and the revelations are coming the next week is the last episode i think of the series maybe they'll do a second season in a different form or fashion but as far as right now um this episode is it makes me love this series even much more than i was ever expecting because it brings progresses and gets to a finality point that we were expecting to come and it actually delivered so with that said i'm going to give this episode nine and a half out of ten um i'm not giving it a full 10 because it's not a perfect episode like i said it does some really kind of over the top and silly stuff it's doing some convenience work that i don't really like but it unfortunately has to do some of that to continue but nine and a half out of ten still makes it a you know an excellent episode it's an episode that really is very enthralling and very engaging for what it's worth so but yeah that's where I'll stand nine and a half out of ten for suspicion season one episode seven uh questions of trust uh thank you so much for watching as always uh question below do you think there's another revelation coming do you think this is we've gotten the revelations now we're just at the end game what do you think is going to happen and do you think Catherine Newton's or Catherine newman's involved all that good stuff but otherwise that'll do it thank you so much and if you like what you see on the channel hit the subscribe button the join movie emporium hit that notification bell top to bottom is coming next if you like this video awesome hit that like button and as always We'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.